Hello everyone, it's like a pattern of the day, okay? So uh, in the last two videos, we were discussing about few uh, design patterns and make sure uh, if you just jump into this video, make sure you watch the first video, especially uh, with what we discussed the singleton pattern because there we explain why uh, this design pattern important and what we can do with this, okay? So, and what's going to happen to you if you don't know about the design pattern? So, it's important to watch the first video and probably if you don't know about uh, the factory method pattern, it's probably uh, you need to watch the second video as well. And before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel, right? Because not only about the uh, design pattern series and there are multiple things we, I'm going to share with you. My experience uh, and uh, what I do and how I uh, do these things and so many things to share with you. So make sure you subscribe and also like and comment on the video so I, ca I can uh, stay in touch with you. Come into my Facebook page and like it and then you can stay in touch with me. Okay. So today I'm going to uh, discuss interesting design pattern which is a prototype. Right. So this is not like a, a singleton pattern or a factory method pattern we discussed. This whole point of this prototype design pattern is to avoid create, right? Because there are situations uh, creating a new object is very expensive, right? So rather this uh, design pattern encourages you to clone the existing object, right? So therefore this is very, uh, I mean, this is not quite popular. And, but this is a really useful uh, design pattern. For example, let's say uh, you design a system to uh, rent a car application, right? Like we discussed in our microservice uh, video series, right? So in, a, in that rent a car uh, application, probably you need to show hundreds or a uh, few thousands vehicles uh, in your system, right? So that means you need to create an instance of a vehicle object each time, right? So that might be quite expensive, right? So what this encourages, you create the first instance and you register that. And the next time you just clone from the original instance, you don't create a new instance, right? So in other use case, probably if you do uh, some shopping cart application, right? So maybe uh, when you display in a search function, search results, you may, you may need to create uh, uh, items like hundreds of thousands of item object, right? So rather than you creating it and it's encourage you to uh, clone it. So the second thing, it's therefore, I mean, uh, by nature of its objective, it's avoid new keyword, right? So you don't use a new keyword to create uh, the uh, objects. So that means simple, if object creation process is expensive and if there are a lot of things to do when you create the object, so this is the ideal design pattern to use. So because you can uh, avoid a lot of overheads and the performance issues of the object creation process. So as I explained, so this since we this need to uh, clone the objects, usually we uh, you uh, we implement this from clonable interface, right? So clonable interfaces came with uh, Java one point, I think, as I remember. So um, that has a weakness because it's always written um, object type instead of it doesn't it doesn't know about the generics because uh, generic wasn't exist by the time uh, they designed the uh, clone in, uh, method clonable interface. So um, probably in, a, in the real world application you may have to use your own uh, clone method. But you need to careful when you implement this uh, prototype design pattern for two, uh, one reason, right? So that means when you clone it, you need to make sure in your architecture whether you need a shallow copy or whether you do you need a deep copy, right? So shallow copy is mean you just copy in the first level uh, ob object and the references to the new object, but the deep copy means you go inside and you copy, uh, you clone each and every uh, object and the values to the new object, right? So that's the difference between deep copy and the shallow copy, right? So shallow copy is quite dangerous sometimes because you have this object and you take this and because if you copied some references to your new object, if you modify these references here and that could affect into your original object as well. So be careful when you do that. So make sure, uh, understand whether you need the shallow or the uh, deep, right? So. For this example, what I'm going to demonstrate you, you have a, a vehicle uh, class, right? And you have a car and the bus, you come from the vehicle. So we are going to go back to the rent a car application, right? What we develop in the microservices. So uh, you have a vehicle and you have a car and the bus, right? 
and now you are going to create these two and a register on your program start on the registry right and then whenever you need something you are going to get it from there and uh, do you whatever your modification you need right so that's what you are going to do so here you have a, a vehicle class i create this as an abstract class so i have a full type and the engine capacity as a uh, values here right so i'm going to uh, create a getters and setters for this i have a bus uh, which come from a uh, vehicle right so that means it has a uh, uh, engine capacity and the fuel type properties already and rather than that other than that you have a number of uh, seats here right so for this also i'm going to create uh, uh, getters and setters and i don't need this but i'm just sick of creating it. and i'm also i'm going to create a two string method so then i know exactly uh, what is this okay also i'm going to create a car here right so it's the same thing you have a, a, a type because it determines whether it's a luxury type or whether it's a mini car or what right so then you're going to create a getters and setters for this as well and also to stream method okay so as i explained before your vehicle need to clone right so you need to clone this for a new one so i'm going to uh, implement from Clonable interface. I'm going to write the method here. Clone method, right? So this one, um, it, it just do, do is like it just uh, go to the super and clone method, super clone method, right? This is enough for us for this example. But keep in mind, uh, if you need the customize, if you have a uh, inner object and the deep copy, you need to implement your own clone method, right? And then if you go back here to the registry what the registry means it's like it is the place where you create the objects what you uh, created right so initially created so usually you use the new keyword only when you create the initial objects right so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, call this constructor here right so from here i am going to create a method called initialize right so let's say uh, this dot initialize right and then uh, obviously i don't have that method so i'm going to create create that right so what that does is i'm going to create a bus and car quickly and assign into this uh, registry right Right, so I created two uh, different uh, objects. So I'm going to add these to my uh, vehicles registry. Vehicles dot put my vehicle type is vehicle type dot car, and I'm going to add my uh, car here, and then Okay, so now my uh, registration is done. So that means you can understand. So whenever I create an instance from the registry, it call this constructor. When you call this constructor, it come here and it do this default uh, in initialization, right? So you can understand now. It use the new keyword, but only when it really initialize, right? So now I'm going to create a new method called uh, get vehicle. So looks like I have a spelling mistake here. So let me to uh, fix that as well. Okay, I had a small mistake over there. Right, so when someone trying to get the vehicle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, assign this vehicle is vehicles dot get so I, I need a vehicle type right and then I'm going to clone this okay 
I'm going to clone this as I explained before. I need to cast this because always the clone return the object type, right? So this uh, this will give you an exception for me. And I'm going to uh, just put as a uh, stack trace and I'm going to return the vehicle here, right? So for this, I'm going to uh, create this object here is null and this and okay. I'm returning it, right? So now I'm done. What I need to do here is I'm going to create a register, registry and equal new registry, right? This time it go and ex execute the constructor. That means it do the initialize, initialize uh, work. So I'm going to get a car, right? So car equal registry dot get vehicle and I'm going to tell vehicle type dot car. I need to get a car, right? So now I need to cast this to car. Okay. So I'm going to put something like this here, right? Uh, so this will come as a, a default value. That's what I'm just uh, going to show you here. And I'm going to change that car dot set uh, type luxury right so because initially it was a mini i'm going to put as a luxury and i'm going to print this again but you will see this changed all right you will see this changed so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a second car here right and i'm going to print this this is a new car i'm expecting here and i'm going to print this right I hope you can assume what's going to happen, okay? And I'm going to run this program, right? So you can see here, I got as a mini car, right? I got as a mini car, and then I change the type to uh, luxury. So that's why I have this luxury car here, right? So the car one, I'm going to get again from the registry. Now I'm getting back as a mini, right? Because if you confuse this why it should be a uh, lux because it's a shallow copy but this the variable type is a string right so it's string is immutable right so you know that part right you can see why it is comes as a mini back right so this is a simply uh, what it mean by prototype so you can see here when we created these two cars right so what i print here we never use a new keyword right so that means we don't go through that uh, expensive in, uh, instantiation process and in this case it's not expensive at all right it's just empty constructor but if your uh, instantiation process is expensive we don't go through that right rather than we just have a template object already created and registered in the registry and uh, we use this uh, we, we clone this when we need it right so usually we don't see this much in the programs because basically uh, these type of things uh, involve some sort of registry and this type of thing we can see almost in the frameworks but uh, not much in the uh, the in, in uh, program but that's nothing stopping you if you if your use case is fitting to this feel free to use uh, this prototype pattern right so this is the uh, third pattern we discussed and I hope you do practicals because don't go to the trap you feel like okay this is very simple why do I need to do the practical right no that's not right so though you looks like uh, simple just try to watch this video and uh, implement this in your memory i promise you you cannot do that if you if you if this is the first time with these patterns right you can do that so if you want to do that you need to watch and you need to do your practical again and with this my program and then tomorrow probably you can do that if you if you can do that tomorrow as well you need to practice this as much as you can understand this and uh, do that your own then See you in the next video. Until that, stay safe, take care, make sure subscribe before you leave.